Hello, my name is David Oster, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon from Denver Vale Orthopedics specializing in knee and shoulder disorders. I'd like to talk about ACL injuries. The ACL is the anterior cruciate ligament, and it's the front crossing ligament in the knee, and is frequently injured in sports. On the right-hand side is a knee partially flexed with the tissues taken off the front. The anterior cruciate ligament is here outlined in red, the posterior cruciate ligament in blue, the lateral collateral ligament in yellow, and the medial collateral ligament in green. Now the ACL is frequently injured in sports. <clears throat> it's usually associated with a non-contact injury, a twisting, a turning, a stop, or a start, and frequently the patient or the person will feel like the knee partially goes out of place. 70% of the time a pop is heard and usually there's a large amount of swelling associated with this. When the anterior cruciate ligament tears, it bleeds and that blood accumulates into the knee joint and that's called a hemarthrosis. Now the anterior cruciate ligament, its function is to provide stability. It keeps the lower bone called the tibia from shifting on the upper bone called the femur. It also protects the menisci, which are cartilage discs that sit between the upper and the lower bone, from being injured and tearing. It's important for cutting, turning, twisting activities such as basketball, skiing, tennis, and soccer to name a few. On the right hand side of this slide is a picture of an intact anterior cruciate ligament. On the right hand side by the probe is the posterior cruciate ligament and this anterior cruciate ligament is intact. This is a torn anterior cruciate ligament. It's red and the probe which is pulling on the posterior backside of the ligament has caused the ligament to deform and pull away from the bone and pull forward. So this is what a torn anterior cruciate ligament looks like. There are surgical options and non-surgical options for ACL tears. The treatment options are dependent on activity level. The more active you are, the more likely you're going to have an episode of instability. Also, treatment options are dependent on associated injuries. If you have a meniscus tear, then this does usually require surgical management, and most people will consider having the ACL reconstructed if they're going to have surgery as well. Non-surgical management includes physical therapy with strengthening of the quads, hamstrings, and the core muscles as well, including the hip abductors and adductors. Bracing is also successful. This involves using a brace that's specifically designed to control the knee against rotation. However, both physical therapy and bracing have limited success anywhere from about a 20 to about a 40 percent success rate. For patients that are very active and young and are planning on doing sport, cutting, turning, twisting activities, reconstructing the ACL is probably the best choice. Now, repair means to sew the ligament back together, and this was done many years ago and failed about 50% of the time. Therefore, we now perform a reconstruction. A reconstruction is replacing the ligament with some type of tendon graft. Tendons that we more commonly use are tendons about the knee. And these surgeries have about a 90% success rate compared to about a 20 to 40% success rate with non-surgical management. Reconstructing the ligament, again, involves replacing the anterior cruciate ligament with a tendon graft. The reason a tendon graft is used is because there are no spare ligaments that you can use to transfer and act as a new anterior cruciate ligament. Therefore, a tendon is selected and this is used to replace the anterior cruciate ligament. Now what's interesting is over a four to six month period this tendon graft will turn into something that looks more like a ligament than a tendon. So if you biopsy this tissue six months or later after the surgery biochemically and histologically it looks more like a ligament than a tendon. There are several tendon groups that it can be used about the knee and I will mention these and go over some of the pros and cons of each. On the inside of the knee, up along the uh, upper portion of the lower bone are the hamstrings. And there are two hamstrings that are used frequently to reconstruct the ACL. They are outlined here in red and blue. 
these tendons are taken off the lower bone called the tibia and then a tendon stripper is used to go along the tendon and as it gets into the muscle the tendon is cut. Another tendon that can be used is the patellar tendon and this is outlined in black and this tendon goes from the kneecap down to the lower bone. Usually a third of the tendon, the central third is used, about anywhere from 8 to 10 millimeters. At each end of this graft a portion of the kneecap bone as well as the lower bone is used to help fix it into the tunnels that the graft is placed in. Another graft that can be used is the quad tendon. This tendon as outlined in yellow goes from the upper portion of the kneecap up on towards the thigh. The lower end of the graft at the kneecap has an area of attached bone from the kneecap whereas the upper portion of the graft is just soft tissue. This graft is used less frequently in the United States. Another source of tendon material is an allograft or a cadaver graft. This tissue is procured from a cadaver and then processed. Many different tendons can be used for this as there's a wide variety of tendons that can be used throughout the body. There's the traditional grafts such as hamstrings, patellar tendon, Achilles tendon, and tendons about the ankle. The advantages of an allograft is you're not sacrificing any of your own tissue. However, there are several disadvantages. The disadvantages are there's a higher risk of disease transmission such as HIV, hepatitis, and bacterial infections. It also does not repopulate with cells as quickly and therefore it takes more time for it to make that change from a tendon to a ligament. And then lastly, it's more expensive. It can add approximately $2,500 to $5,000 in addition to the cost of the surgery. My personal preference is using a hamstring autograft or using the hamstrings from your own knee. I use the hamstrings because it tends to make it easier for a patient after surgery to regain range of motion as compared to a patellar tendon graft and patellar tendon grafts are associated with a higher chance of having kneeling pain. I now have approximately 80 patients who have had a patellar tendon on one side and a hamstring on the other knee and all but two patients if they had to have surgery over again would select a hamstring graft. As compared to an allograft there's no risk of disease transmission such as HIV or AIDS using your own tissue and because you're using your own tissue it will repopulate quicker with tissue that's more like a ligament as compared to an allograft where there are no cells within the tissue that can help repopulate it. And lastly allografts are very expensive and as mentioned before it can add up to $2,500 to $5,000 more in the cost of an anterior cruciate ligament surgical procedure. Now how is an anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction performed? Well the first step is to remove the anterior cruciate ligament that was torn and this is outlined in red here and removed. The next step is to drill the tunnels. There's a tunnel that's drilled in the lower bone and a tunnel that's drilled in the upper bone and the graft will then slide through this area and be passed up in the area where the former ACL was. The upper portion of the graft is fixed with two bioabsorbable pins while the lower portion is fixed with a bioabsorbable screw that is screwed into the tunnel and then below that a screw and a washer is placed on top of the graft and that's compressed over the outer edge of the bone. So in essence there's two methods of fixation on the upper end of the graft and two methods of fixation on the lower end of the graft. So that's a discussion on anterior cruciate ligament reconstructions, the surgical and non-surgical options, discussing also different graft choices for an ACL reconstruction as well as how the surgery is performed. If you would like to view an actual ACL surgical video please visit my website davidostermd.com for an appointment 303-214-4500.